Hello everyone! And in this week's video, I'm turning myself into video game characters. This is the fourth video in this series where I draw myself as a character in a video game. Um, I'm not sure what else to say for this intro, so I guess we'll just jump into the video. So first I'm going to draw myself as a character from the Professor Layton series. Professor Layton is one of my all-time favorite video game series, and I love it so much. If you've never played one before, it's a game where you solve a bunch of different puzzles and brain teasers and word puzzles and stuff. There's also a story and an overall mystery you're solving. There are even animated cutscenes in the game, which I always really love. The first couple of games are in 2D, however, it eventually went over to 3D graphics when the Nintendo 3DS came out. Obviously, I'll be drawing myself as a 2D character. So I am drawing myself in the style of the Professor Layton games, but I'm actually going to think of my character as being in the Layton's Mystery Journey game. This game is actually about Professor Layton's daughter and follows her story. Since it's the newest game in the series, I thought I'd have my character be placed in that game world. The Professor Layton games have many characters that are often very unique in design. They can be many different shapes and look all kinds of different ways. One thing that is fairly consistent is that the characters have pretty large heads in comparison with their body, especially characters like Flora, Emmy, Cat, and so on. As I was working on this, I actually had my Professor Layton art book sitting open next to me, and I was using it for inspiration. I based my body proportions off of Emmy. I think she's like in her 20s, and I'm in my 20s, so I thought she would be a good character to reference. After my sketch is done, I start working on the line art. The art in the Professor Layton art book seems to use line art that is fairly thin with a slight texture, so I'm going to use the textured pen for the line art. One of my favorite parts about turning myself into video game characters is imagining what my life would be like in the game world. And at first I had no idea what I wanted my life to be like in this world. I wanted to be a character that would be involved with the main characters in some way. Like I mentioned, I'm placing myself into Lighten's Mystery Journey. The main characters of this game are Catriel, or Cat, Ernest, and Cheryl. Cat runs a detective agency business, and when I remembered this, I got an idea. I could be her accountant. <laughs> If you didn't know, I majored in accounting in college and graduated with my accounting degree. Businesses usually need accountants, so I figured I could be the accountant for the Lighten Detective Agency. I probably wouldn't be much help when it came to solving mysteries. I would probably just stay at the office and maybe once I finished all my accounting duties, I would do little odd jobs around the office and maybe make snacks for everyone when they came back from work. However, I do imagine I would maybe sometimes get roped into solving mysteries somehow. <laughs> The coloring for this piece was really simple. Professor Layton characters pretty much just have flat colors with very little shading, if any. I always really like the color palette of the Professor Layton games. They often have a very warm color palette to them, and it just feels kind of cozy. <laughs> Especially the first game, Curious Village. It has a very warm color palette to it. For my outfit, I kept it pretty casual. I just tried to make myself look a little bit businessy or like I'm an accountant. To help sell the idea, I am holding a folder filled with papers. So here's me in the style of Professor Layton. Rebecca works as an accountant at the Layton Detective Agency. Rebecca doesn't solve mysteries, she prefers to stay behind her desk. However, she always has tea and snacks ready for the group when they come back to the office after a long day of work. This next video game is one that many of you suggested, and it is Super Mario. I love Mario games, I've been playing them for as long as I can remember. I loved playing Super Mario World on our SNES, and I loved playing Super Mario Sunshine as a kid. I've pretty much played Mario games my entire life. <laughs> um, so I was actually feeling really conflicted on how to draw myself for this Mario style one. The first thing that came to mind was making myself a princess like Peach and Daisy, but I wasn't sure if I should be a princess. I slightly felt like I would be a toad or something, <laughs> um, but toads are pretty generic and I thought it'd probably be more interesting to draw myself as a princess, so I went with that, even though I don't know if I would fit the role of royalty very well. Um, so since I'm drawing myself as a princess, I needed to decide on what I was the princess of. Peach is the princess of the Mushroom Kingdom, and Daisy is the princess of Sarasa Land. So I was trying to think what could I be the princess of. I was looking at a list of the different Mario Kingdoms, and I decided I wanted to be the princess of the Luncheon Kingdom because it's a food thing kingdom. 
so that's cool. Plus the little fork characters are so adorable and I love them so much. And I found one that just says potato over and over again. <laughs> if you don't know, my nickname is Potato and my siblings will often call me that. Uh, so yeah, I feel like I'm a good fit for the Luncheon Kingdom. <laughs> because it is a food themed kingdom, I'm making my crown and dress themed off of a chef outfit. Also, Mario is a 3D game but I am drawing myself in a 2D style. You often see 2D art in promotional things or merchandise. When I was looking up 2D art, I came across the art from the Princess Peach game for the DS. This style is a little bit more soft and cute, so I decided to mimic the style from that game's art. It uses brown line art instead of black and has a little bit more shading to it. For my colors, I wanted to avoid the combination of brown and red because I didn't want to be a knockoff Pauline. <laughs> I tried many different colors, but I didn't like them as much. Plus the little fork guys have red scarves and I thought it'd be really cute if I matched them. So I decided to go with the red. Oh, also it seems like the little fork people are called Vulpanon. I had to Google that. <laughs> um, so I'll try to call them that from now on instead of little fork people. One thing I did do differently is that I shaded my eyes. The art I was studying only had flat color in the eyes, but I really wanted to add the shading to them just to make them pop and feel a little bit more lively. Uh, so I did. Oh, I also added little gems to my hat to make it feel a little bit more crown-like instead of just like a hat. Uh, just to make it feel a little bit more princessy and fancy. So here is me in the style of Super Mario. Princess Potato is the princess of the Luncheon Kingdom. She adores her loyal subjects, the Bulbanan. She thinks they're very adorable. The last game I'm going to draw myself into is Fire Emblem. If you've never played a Fire Emblem game, it is basically a strategy RPG where you control units on a map and try to defeat the enemy. So far I have only played three Fire Emblem games. I've played Fire Emblem the Sacred Stones for the GBA. I was one of the people that spent $250 on a 3DS. So I got a whole bunch of GBA and NES games for free from Nintendo because they felt bad for lowering the price not long after launch. So yeah, that's how I got to play my first Fire Emblem game. And after playing that one, I became much more interested in the series. The second game I played was Fire Emblem Echoes Shadows of Valentia for the Nintendo 3DS. It's a remake of Fire Emblem Gaiden and I think it was for the Famicom. I really enjoyed this game when I played it and I loved a lot of the characters from that game. Uh, Lucas was my favorite. <laughs> I really liked him. Uh, the last Fire Emblem game I played was Three Houses for the Nintendo Switch. This one is also really fun. I chose the Blue Lion House. I haven't played any of the other houses yet. I thought about playing the game again and choosing a different house, but there are so many games I want to play and so little time. <laughs> I did consider drawing myself as a Three Houses character because it is the newest game and I do like it a lot. However, I really love the art style of Shadows of Valentia, so I decided to draw myself in the style of that game. Plus it's kind of a more traditional Fire Emblem, so I can give myself an old school kind of classic design. So as you can probably tell from my outfit, I decided to make myself a cleric. I think we all know I'd be pretty useless in battle. <laughs> so I'll just heal people instead. Uh, for my outfit, I took inspiration from lots of different clerics in the Fire Emblem games. The outfits for all the characters in this game are very detailed, so I tried my best to make my outfit look fancy. I looked up a bunch of different ornate pattern brushes and just different patterns on the Clip Studio Paint Asset Library and used them to help me make my outfit more detailed. I thought making my outfit detailed would be kind of troublesome, but it was actually really fun. I don't usually get to work with ornate designs, so it was a lot of fun trying to think of ways to make my outfit more fancy. One thing I used a lot was the border effect. When I turn it on, whatever I draw on that layer gets an outline around it. This makes adding little details with line art a lot easier. I also turn the effect on when I add the fancy emblem to my skirt. That way it also looks like it has line art, but I don't have to manually draw the line art around it. <laughs> it's an easy and kind of lazy way to make things look more fancy than they are. <laughs> In Shadows of Valentia, there is a cleric named Silk. 
Her outfit has a white, blue, and gold color scheme, and I think it's really pretty. So I thought I'd use the same colors for my outfit. When I was looking at the art from the game, it seemed to have a texture to it. So I found a watercolor paper texture and applied it to my entire character. I was about to start in the shading, but then I remembered that I needed to draw my staff. I won't be able to heal people without it, and I would be even more useless. <laughs> so to draw the staff, I'm once again using the border effect so that whatever I draw gets an outline around it. This seemed like an easier way to go about drawing the wand. That way I wouldn't have to draw line art for all the little details and stuff. Like with adding details to my outfit, I thought drawing the staff would be kind of troublesome. Uh, but once again, it was surprisingly fun. Because it's a magical staff, I could kind of just make it however I wanted it to be. And was free to play around with the details and the shape. And I just kept doing that until I thought it looked okay. I drew the overall shape and then went back in to add some line art details inside of the wand. To finish it off, I added a blue orb in the middle. It was a lot of fun to add. I liked making it look shiny. So at first I was going to have the staff kind of loosely placed in the hand on the left. But then I wondered what it would look like if I placed it in the hand on the right. And it was already making a fist so I could really easily place it there. And I kind of liked it in the right hand more than the left hand. Because it kind of looked like I was hiding behind the staff or I'm using it as a way to defend myself. Uh, so yeah, I placed it there. The shading for the art in Shadows of Valentia is both simple yet very detailed, <laughs> if that makes sense. All of the shading seems to have a watercolor effect to it. So I went to the Clip Studio Paint Asset Library and downloaded this watercolor brush set. Also, this set is really nice and I love the textures and how the brushes behave. So if you're looking for watercolor brushes in Clip Studio, I recommend this set. Plus it's free, so that's nice. Adding the shading was a lot of fun and pretty relaxing because I was kind of just adding washes of shadow. There wasn't a ton of gradients or blending, so things stayed pretty simple. So yeah, the application process was simple, but I did try my best to mimic the kind of detailed look of the art from the game. The game art seems to not only use shading for where shadows are, but also just as a way to make objects look more interesting and less empty. Like with my long skirt, I kind of just applied shading in areas that I felt looked kind of empty or needed to be more interesting instead of just thinking where the shadows form like I usually do. As I was working on this, my sister and I were talking and we joked that if I was in the game, I would probably use my staff to like whack things. <laughs> like if something got too close to me, I would whack it and run away. Or if I get startled, I may end up whacking one of my team members with the staff. <laughs> I would definitely be very jumpy and easily startled on a battlefield. <laughs> For all of the gold accessories and details, I just applied a kind of busy texture to it and set the texture to multiply. The gold detail in the game art all had a texture applied to it, so I did the same. It's a really easy way to make the gold look shaded and more interesting. Oh, also, I made the orb slightly glow because I thought it'd be cool. So here's me as a Fire Emblem character. Rebecca may not be much of a fighter, however she is a great help to those injured in battle. Be careful not to startle her or else you may end up getting whacked in the face with her staff. It was a lot of fun drawing in these different styles. It's always fun to change things up and try new things. If you have any video game suggestions, leave them in the comments. Maybe I'll do them next time. So that is all for this video, but before we end, I want to thank my super lovely patrons over on Patreon for supporting my work and my channel. I truly appreciate it so much. And I also appreciate you watching this video, so thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next week in my next video. Bye!